Hallelujah. Oh, just somebody give away the praise of the back in the church. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings to all of you this morning. In the name that unites us all, that Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we're, we're not here today because uh, some fet or some zessa, Sunday morning zessa is going on here. Amen. People unite in, 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 in times like those and for seasons like those as well. But we are here to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Ultimately, all of the activities that we take part in this morning is in celebration of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So welcome to the house of the Lord. I thank you very much for your uh, accepting me here in the beloved, in this part of the vineyard. Uh, to Pastor Muhammad and his lovely wife. I always wonder where she gets the energy from. I don't know. But, yeah. No, nah, it's, it's something that the Holy Spirit plus. <laughs> you know, but God bless you in your ministry. And uh, likewise, Pastor Muhammad, God bless you. And all of you here today, God bless you. Uh, welcome to the house of God. I'm, I'm going to leave a thought with you today. And allow me to, if I may, beat up on you a little bit, myself included, and then I'm going to let you into a place of light and of hope and of encouragement. But it may seem, see the scripture tells us that what is born of flesh is flesh. But what is born of spirit then is spirit. Marvel not then that you must be born again. You see, God, I, I, I'm aware that He made that statement because in Christendom, to deal with the people of God, you must be born again. You know that, right? Amen. People of God are special people. <laughs> so today I want to talk to us on this very simple topic. Incapable, yet confident. They may seem juxtaposed to each other, but I want you to focus on this first word, incapable, and later on we will deal with yet confident. Let me define for you what incapable means. Incapable means that we are unable to do or achieve something. We are lacking capacity. We are lacking ability or qualification for a specific purpose or plan. I am incapable right now of putting out a thousand dollars from my pocket. I lack the capacity. Some of us are incapable of different things. But ultimately, we all are incapable. Now, don't get offended. We have a society now that tells us and base its findings in scripture that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That is true within its context. But ultimately, as human beings, we are incapable beings. We can achieve nothing on our own. As human 
means mere mortals because we gave up the right to become. And when God created us, he said he prayed into man's nostril and man became. But you and I, through Adam, we gave up the right to become. Yes. And in giving up the right to become, by disobeying God, we lost the potential to be capable to do anything. But I'm going to leave you confident today. Though incapable, yet confident. The Greek word for incapable is, and I'm not good with foreign tongues, apirastus. Apirastus. It means not susceptible to enticement, unable to be tempted, lacking the very capacity to be enticed with evil. This speaks of God. In the book of James 1 and verse 13, the scripture tells us, when you are tempted, do not say that it is God who tempted you. For God does not tempt anyone with evil, nor is he able to be tempted by anything. He's incapable of being tempted. Amen. Just like he's incapable of telling a lie, or going back on his word, Amen. or breaking a promise, God is incapable of doing these things. So God can't do everything. Jesus. God is incapable of not loving you. Hallelujah. He's incapable. He cannot not love you. And so it is today, we are a little bit opposed from God because while God cannot do some things that are opposed to very nature, we can't do anything at all, Amen. even within the nature that we were created in. Amen. going to be a little bit theological, a little bit deep, but let's trust the Spirit of God that He will bring us through. So God cannot do some things. He's, just, he's incapable. You and I are also incapable of some things. And today I want to share with you what we are incapable of. When Jesus was speaking to Peter, Jesus asked Peter a very particular question. He said to Peter, Who do men say that I am? And Peter responded, by saying, you are the Son of God. And Jesus replied in a very, very, very poignant response. He said, blessed are you, Simon Peter by Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed that to you. Amen. Flesh and blood is incapable of revealing that I am the Messiah, the true one, the only Messiah. Flesh and blood does not have the capability to bring that to clear on your mind. <laughs> that is why he that is born of the spirit is spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something else that we are capable of doing. You see, Revelation can't do it. And that is why. God took it so seriously and he said in the book of Deuteronomy, he said anybody that prophesies a thing and it does not come to pass, yes. take them out of the camp and stone them because revelation and inspiration is God to you by the Spirit of God alone. We are incapable. Jesus. So it is the scripture tells us 
through the Apostle Paul. He said that the natural man, the man that is that is uncleansed, untouched by the Spirit of God, he cannot, he is incapable of receiving the things of God, for they are spiritually discerned. Incapable. Yes. Incapable, Pastor. The things of God are to be handled and understood by the people of God. Because in them, they have the capability to bring to bear the righteousness of God in this world. You see, sometimes we don't recognize that we are incapable. That's the worst thing, you know. So I googled incapable in, in the Bible, and what came up was a, a, a whole list of, of disabilities in the Bible. So I, I, I did it over and over, and this word incapable didn't come up. Only impotent, only disability, only things that would have pointed towards incapability, but not the very word itself. I recognize there must be somewhere I got some trouble with this messaging because I was looking for this word incapable but I couldn't find it but what I found was men and events where they realized that in and of themselves they can do nothing for I can do nothing of myself but by the power and the spirit of the most high God one such person was Gideon Gideon is there. Imagine I say, you know anybody that's really skinny? Remember, was it Popeye? And they, they, uh, growing up as children, Popeye and Olive? Yes. Skinny, 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 skinny man. No muscles, as he would say. Huh? Anybody can walk and, and take full advantage of Popeye and Olive. But there was something that happened. He was incapable by himself, but there was something that happened when he ate spinach. Yes. Okay. There was something that happened when Popeye ate spinach. And so it is, we are like Popeye in many areas, in many sense, that we are skinny. We are incapable of defending ourselves. What God has given us responsibility over, and we are capable of doing it in our strength. Yes. Yes. So, Skinny Gideon is, is under this tree, and the Spirit of the Lord, the angel, comes to him and said, Gideon, great man of valor. Mm -hmm. Gideon looked around. Gideon said, Who, me? <laughs> Who, me? Me? Great man of valor? He must have looked at himself and covered himself. But you see, God doesn't see us in our incapable state. God doesn't see you and I in our incapable state. He wants us to see ourselves in that manner and see him as the capable God, as the able God to do and to accomplish so he called out to Gideon. You may be a Gideon today, yeah? Gideon said, I'm the smallest clan. I'm, I'm the smallest member in my family. And our clan is the smallest clan. How, how, how it is you can come and talk to me and call me man of valor? Glory. What is your position in life today? In spite of what is going on in the world, you look at your future, you look at yourself, insignificant. Hallelujah. And God is saying something to you, but you're looking at your surroundings. You're looking at what makes you incapable, this flesh. And you say, Lord, me? Yes. Me? What can 
I do to effect change in the world? What can I do to assist in bringing souls to the kingdom of God? Me, what can I do? The voice of the Lord says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's not you that is going to do it to perform the work. It's the Spirit of God. Likewise, we look at King. Just going to go through some and remind. It's good to, re, to be reminded of the scriptures, you know. Amen. King Solomon, when he ascended the throne, when King Solomon ascended the throne, he had the task of building the temple. And as he was about to, 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 to be enthroned and to take his position as leader, after the death of his father David, King Solomon recognized that he was incapable. He recognized that he was inexperienced. He recognized that when he looked upon the landscape of the people of God, it was a calling that was too much for him. Let me tell you something. One of the most important things that we can realize and understand as human beings is that we are inadequate. You see, if we recognize that we are inadequate, then we must need to get support from somewhere else. So Solomon recognized that he was an experience and the word of God tells us that Solomon went to the Lord. The Lord, as he slept, the Lord came to him rather and said, ask me whatever you want. I am sure if we are, listen, we are in a position now that if we are sure it's the Lord that comes to us and said, ask what we want. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. The list would be so long. And just before the end, we remember, oh yeah, give me, give me some grease. There will be all the things that we desire and we didn't even desire. But let me tell you something. When you recognize that you are incapable, Solomon recognized what was important to him. What is important to you? What was important to King Solomon was the fact that he had responsibility over the people of God, the call of one, the chosen ones of God. And therefore, he did not want to fail God in his duty as king. So God said, well, what is this you want? And Solomon said, recognizing his incapabilities and his experience, he said, Lord, give me wisdom that I might rule your people and judge your people well. And immediately, the scripture tells us that a situation arose. Immediately, a situation arose between two mothers. And the two mothers came. One, two of them had a baby same time. One lay down on her baby, suffocated her baby, she died. And she got up during the night, recognized what happened, stole the other one's baby, put it beside her, and took her dead baby, and put it beside the other baby. The other mother. And that situation fell smack in Solomon's lap. Hallelujah. But he recognized just in time that he was incapable to judge. And he gave God command of his life, command of his mind, command of his decision making, and victory came. Let me tell you, when I read that, he says, brethren, who could have come up with a solution like that? There was a man, a king, another king of Judah, by the name of Jehoshaphat. The armies of the Arab armies came up against Jehoshaphat and the kingdom of Judah, and they taunted Jehoshaphat. They spoke to him, mocked him about his God. 
Let me tell you something. They belittle his God. The same God that allowed these people not to be attacked when Israel came out of Egypt. They came back to bite Israel in its behind. You know people like that? You grant them grace. You do all the best that you can do for them. And they show their incapabilities of being thankful. And they come back to bite you in your butt, as you see. But you know, as people of God, even though we are incapable in so many ways, yet we have a quiet confidence. How many of you have been in situations where you are overwhelmed by the enemy's plan and work in your life, but there is a quiet confidence in you? Hallelujah. Deep down inside, you know that God is going to come true. Hallelujah. You know that God will make a way even where there is no way God will come true. You're not capable, you're not able, but God is evil. Jehoshaphat went before the Lord and he called the princes and, and the armies were arrayed uh, before Judah, ready to pounce and to destroy. And he was reminded that, don't you know that the God we serve is not only the God of the mountain, but he's the God of the valley as well. And therefore, we are not able to come before this army, but God is able. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what is arrayed before you in your life, you might be incapable of putting up a defense, but God is enabled. If God be for us, then who can be against us? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. The name Hezekiah. Hezekiah was in the same position. Hallelujah. The Syrian army had, had, had overwhelmed him when he looked around. The scripture says, when he looked into the mountains, they, they, they were just men as far as you can see. They were overwhelmed. But the, 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 the scripture tells us that he received a letter from the king of Syria. He went before the Lord, picked up the letter, placed it on the ground before the Lord, and he said, this is what is written before your people. We are incapable of dealing with this Lord, but we surrender it to you. We are not going to attempt to defend or fight in our incapable state, but before you, Lord, we know we will be victorious. Praise God. A voice came back in her. Never worry. You see, the battle is not yours. The battle, remember that. In your incapable state, the battle is not yours. For the battle belongs to the Lord, God of hosts. Do you recognize anything that you are incapable of today? Do you recognize anything that may be beyond your capacity or your talents or your experience? Surrender it to the Lord. Surrender it to the Lord God Almighty. There was a woman for 12 years, she had an issue. She had a period for 12 years non-stop. She was constantly losing, literally losing life. Life was flowing out of her body. The scripture tells us in the book of Mark that that lady, she went to many doctors. You know doctors are incapable? Doctors are incapable. Doctors and scientists, government offices, the prime minister, presidents, they are incapable. Amen. They may be well, but they are 
incapable. Their decisions in their heart, they think they are doing what they are, what is right, but they are incapable of solving the issues of life. This, this, the sister, she had an issue of life. And she went to those who she thought would know how to solve her problem. But they were incapable. Yes. The scripture said she spent all that she had. You ever spent all that you had on that issue? Still at the end, you will know better off. Imagine the flow, the, 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 the life from this woman's body. Thinking that she would dissolve all her wealth and spend it at the feet of the doctors and the scientists. But the scripture says she grew worse. Since the start of this pandemic, all of the statistics and all of the attempts to make things better, it seems like things are getting worse. Yeah. Every day is a higher count of infections. It seems as though things are getting worse because the men who manage the affairs of this world are incapable. But the people of God, Hallelujah. we have a confidence. Yes. Yes. Glory. That if in this life only we have hope. Jesus. If in this Jesus. life only we have hope, yes. we are like most men, miserable. Yes. See, we have a quiet confidence. Hallelujah. That one day, one day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John said, I saw a new heaven. Yes. I saw a new earth. He said, and the old heaven and the old earth had passed away. Yes. Along with the old earth that had passed away, there was no more dying. There was no more pain. There was no more crying. There was no more mourning. For the former things would have passed away. Behold, everything is now new. We serve a God that is able. A God that is capable. A God that is faithful. A God
So this woman spent all that she had. All that she had. And she came to a point where she recognized that the doctors were incapable. Her money and her wealth were incapable. And the scripture says that she heard that a man was passing. She heard that this man did miraculous things. His name was Jesus. The scripture says, according to the book of the law, that when you have an issue such as she had with a flow of blood, that like we have it today, no contact and no mingling, she could not go amongst the people because she would have contaminated them. But she had a quiet confidence. And if I could just reach out, it doesn't matter the implication, it doesn't matter the risk. If I could just reach out and touch, and touch the hem of his capable garment, I know in my heart that I will be made whole. Nothing else was evil. Nobody else was capable. Amen. But the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We got to recognize when we are incapable. Yes. We got to recognize that we are incapable of everything. Yes. We can do nothing. I can do nothing except the Christ that is in me. You see, the worst sinner on the street committed the most heinous crimes. And we look at them sometimes and we think all sorts of things. But there go I, but the grace of God. Hallelujah. Yes, God's grace. There goes my life, but for the grace of God. Capable, yet confident. You know, we are capable of one thing. The one thing that we are probably capable of, we don't try to pursue it. And I'll end with this. Riches from the day we born to the day we die, we fight it down. Property, cars, house, land, you name it, clothes, food, travel, whatever it is, education, career, we, we, we go after it. That's fine. All power to you. God bless you. But that, not, that is not the end of man. Amen. Hallelujah. God created. Let me tell you why we are incapable. Because we walk out of lockstep with God. Amen. God is the source of everything that we can ever have or be. Yes. We walk. Out of step with him, we can't achieve anything. You want your life to be an astounding success. In word and in deed, in your thinking, walk with God. Find your place with God. Let God declare, not yourself, that you are like he did with Job. Do you know that my servant Job is a righteous man? Hallelujah. You want to succeed in this life? You want to succeed in this pandemic? You want to succeed in, in everything you put your hands to in life? Walk in lockstep with God. Like Solomon did, ask him to have wisdom as your guide 
in all your decision making. Surrender, submit all your ways unto God, and He will direct your path. That's where success comes from. Walking in lockstep with God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Believe it or not, I went off track today. See, I didn't even use my. But God is good. Trust that your presence will remain in God. The things 